right, before I start, I just want to let you guys know I have a short TLDR and my own conclusion for the current manifesto that has been posted today, yesterday, depending on your time zones. All right, if you want to see it, uh, you can see the full things over here. It's in my notebook. I will link it in the description below. Um, and also which of the changes has affected my builds. For those of you that has been uh, following my, my different builds for some time, I am going to tell you I have more leak starts and more low budgets for you this round, depending on the nerves, uh, which is quite disappointing. So yeah, take a look at this. I am only going to go through a few of the manifesto things that I feel are right to address. Hello guys. All right. So the manifesto has already been um, released. And I am just going to give my thoughts and a short TLDR of it. I did make um, a Google spreadsheet on my thoughts as well as the TLDR. If you like, then you just can hop it. It's under my, the description below. It's under my POE notebook. All right. And then I do show like which of these changes has affected my builds. Right. So if you are only interested in those, then have a look at my notebook. All right. You need to change to the tab. To the three point one nine manifesto, okay, uh, which I will show later. Um, overall, you know, I have to say I am really quite disappointed in the nerves. Right, yeah, it's just full of nerves. It, it feels like it, it feels like it's back to three point. Wait, what was expedition? League? It's just back to expedition league again, where the whole entire patch is like nerves. Okay. Uh, and this is, remind you again, this is just the manifesto. This is not the full patch notes, okay? So, don't be too excited yet. Um, there might be more nerves coming, we do not know, okay? And over here, right, in this video, I'm just going to show or talk about uh, those things that I feel is important, okay? So, yeah, let's just go through it quickly. Um, I'm not going to go through the first one, which is spell suppression. Uh, spell suppression, basically, just in short, uh, they want the class on the right to use spell suppression. That's all, okay? Um, next is the Arctic armor, right? I, I think, finally, like, there, there, there is a buff on this, but, like, like what the hell? Does, does anybody even use this? Like, staying, staying stationary in one spot now, right? In this era of PoE, it feels like it's telling you to just stand there and die, right? I, I, I don't think any character should be standing still unless you are like so tanky, so strong that you can AFK like probably some minion builds previously in Blight, right? Then that is probably reasonable, but who does that now these days? Okay, it's quite, it's quite insane to stay stationary, especially when you have a lot of those ground dot uh ground damage over time is 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 not viable right <laughs> all right and then um next is flesh and stone so they say it's not powerful enough to warrant the 25 percent mana reservation and they improve it and what do they improve they improve the sand stance to grant what lesser damage from attacks from enemies like what <laughs> who even uses sand stance is Okay, there may be people that use sense stands that maybe uh you know you have problems clearing the map and you are using flesh and stone, so you probably probably will change uh blood stance to sense stance, right? That is the only scenario I can think of. Otherwise, it won't be permanently on sense stance, okay? So I, I feel this improvement is as good as no improvement. <laughs> Alright, I, I mean if you increase a little bit of damage from flesh and stone, then maybe um uh, I mean, in blood stance, then maybe that is a bit better, right? But but not sand stance, man. Nobody gives a shit about that. Okay, and then next. So next one is huge, okay? Defiance banner. Uh, long story short, they reduced the armor and evasion on defiance banner. Um, now grants nearby enemies reduce critical strike chance, okay? For this one, I'm not sure if it's the aura or is it you plant the banner, so I think I think it's the one that you plant the banner, but not so important. And then the anomalous type gives 0.25% armor and evasion rating per quality. This is huge, okay? 50% reduce. I, I think generally, right, this is big. This is a big change for everybody because 
with these changes, right, you are not going to hit the 90% physical damage reduction cap easily anymore. So previously, it's very easy to hit. Like, uh, probably you just need some modifiers that grant you physical damage reduction, maybe from your shield. And then you go determination, you go granite flask that grants you increased armor. And then you go defiance banner, you just take all these armor um, armor stuffs and you can hit 90% physical damage cap very easily okay i think this is this um this thing should not be intended like you should not be allowed to hit 90 percent cap so easily like maybe at 70 percent is still fine but previously it was 90 percent really very easily especially for minion builds those of you that play um karen golem those of you that play scaly mages you know how easy it is to hit okay with your flask on right so I think this is a reasonable change, but it is a big change for everybody. Okay, uh, next is this. So next is Wind Dancer Keystone. Okay, this is not something that I use, but I just want to talk about it. It's, it's quite ridiculous, the change. Okay, so the change is uh, Wind Dancer Keystone passive skill no longer provides 40% more evasion rating. I'm not a fan of evasion. If you have been hit by an attack recently, and now instead it provides 10% more chance to evade attacks you have been hit by an attack recently. When I read this, the first thing was, is now my concern, right? But the second thing is, why would you reduce 40% evasion rating when you get hit down to a flat 10% more chance to evade hit? That means, right, if you get hit once, like maybe you have a pack of magic or just a bunch of white mobs, right? And then you get hit once, you only have 1 out of 10 times to evade again. What the hell? Does that even make sense? You are like just upright nerfing it. It doesn't make sense. I, 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 think, I think this change is quite ridiculous even though I don't use evasion. Like after you get hit, there is only like 1 out of 10 chance that you will evade again. So if you are in a delirium map, right, where you have all the very powerful monsters and tanky monsters and they all charge at you, this thing is not going to help. Right, it is not going to help a bit. This is really just trash, in my own opinion, okay? Correct me if I'm wrong, okay? There's always the comments below, so um, if I'm getting something wrong, please just correct me, okay? <laughs> Alright, then next, I am going to skip a bit of thing. Alright, there is this uh, ward-related uh, stuffs. So basically, ward now instantly we start after 4 seconds, previously 5 seconds, and there is like new tiers of modifier for wards. Um, I guess it's a little bit better for cast when damage taken builds, but okay, hold there, hold there. You will get, uh, I think it's not shocking for everybody, but yeah, CWDT build, builds got nerfed, okay, we'll see that later. And the next is this, okay, this one is very huge for late game. In short, it has reduced to 50% increased global defense. Alright. For all the players that, you know, they play armor stacking, uh, have very high ES, uh, etc, etc. This is very, very big. Okay, because imagine if you have 10k ES, alright. And this is going to reduce it to probably, probably like, I don't know, 6k or 7k. Okay, because 50%, I, if I remember correctly, this 50, this increased global defense, right. It's not like um, after all the additional and reductions, it is like your base. Okay, so if your base is very high, then yes, you get more. But if you have 10k ES, it won't be reduced until 5k ES, probably 6 to 7k, or probably slightly even more. But this is a lot of difference, all right, especially when you're stacking armor, right? That 50% is a huge difference, all right. I, I'm not sure if anybody is still going to use this. I think it is still good, but it has reduced very, very significantly. Okay. And next up is, um, let me see, is the mine over matter. Yes, here. Okay. So uh, the problem was mine over matter and builds that heavily invest in mana in general have been left in an outpowered state, obviously, because you nerf Archmage. Okay. And their solution was the first step to improve the base power of mind over matter and pull that power out of body armor mods. Then we are aware that this change does not solve any problem currently facing mana builds. 
you even said it yourself and are considering exactly what further changes to make for future expansions. The answer is very clear now, developers. The answer is to increase the damage for mana builds, right? It's not. Yes, the sustainability for mine over metal builds is really strong. But the problem now is the damage. The damage has dropped so drastically that nobody is playing it. Okay, because of Ashmage. The 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 combination, the synergy, right, with Indigon uh helmets with power uh mind over matter is what makes it strong. But you have nerfed it so much that it is not worth to invest anymore. Right? Yes, it can be still viable, but other builds that can invest in uh let's say in a similar skill right is gonna overpower almost anything other than this. Right, that's that's the problem here. And the changes is very weird, alright? So let me just say the changes. Uh, my over metal keystone now causes 40% of damage to be taken from mana before life. Okay, previously 30%. So 30 to 40% now. And damage taken from mana before life can no longer rule as an influence modifier. Okay. Uh, Cloak of Defiance, the unique body armor that everybody use for my over metal, no longer has 10% of damage is taken from mana before life. Now, first of all, when this comes to mind, I was a little bit confused. And then when I actually think about it, this is actually a little bit stupid. Right? First of all, your Cloak of Defiance, um, the body armor, gives MOM at like 50, uh, 40% effect, okay? But now, you are removing this additional 10% from the Cloak of Defiance and making MOM at 40% uh, effect, right? So, my question is, then what is the point of having Cloak of Defiance? If you're going to make MOM at 40% and Cloak of Defiance to have MOM at 40%, it's like, I'd rather play a build that scales and can take MOM, rather than have a unique body armor that has MOM. It doesn't make sense, I can just try and scale over there, it's not hard, it's not like I need 100 uh, passive points to scale over to my over metal, right? So... <laughs> So it's it's a very weird, uh, it's a very weird removal from the uh body armor. Like the whole point of Cloak of Defiance is so that we can have a better effect of mind over matter and at the same time have mind over matter. Like at the same time, right? Now you remove the additional effect, uh, additional ten percent, and only have just mind over matter. I would rather just use a more powerful um unique body armor that gives maybe more mana, more damage, and take MOM, right? So I think this change is really a little bit stupid, so don't mind me for language, but yeah, it, a lot of things in this manifesto just doesn't make sense to me, all right? Okay, and the next one is, holy crap, guys, minion build users, minion players, you are not going to love this patch, man. Okay, get ready. So the first one is this, the problem. Okay, there are limited options to invest in minion related stats on player gear, meaning that their base I, uh, stats have to be inflated to compensate. So most minion builds caring too little about itemization and also limits the potential to high, to scale high end minion builds with better items. All right, their, low, their solution <laughs> is to lower minion base life and damage but provide more ways for players to invest into minions on their own gear. So, long story short, right? They are going to reduce the damage and life scaling on minions. Okay? And um, this means the more levels you have on your minions, um, you, have, you will not have as much damage and life on them. Okay, so let's just say um, Skeleton Mage, alright? Maybe at level 20 you have... I I'm just quoting an example, okay? At level 20 maybe you have 1000 damage on each Skeleton Mage. But with this, right, what they are trying to say is they're going to reduce it by I don't know how much and I don't, I don't feel good at all <laughs> with this nerf. But maybe a nerf of 20 to 30% and they are trying to compensate this 20 to 30% into items that can scale with minions. So which means um, you have to build your minion builds with items for more damage from now onwards. Okay. 
Um, first of all, I, I think this is that there are good and bad sides of this. Um, it is going to reduce drastically uh, to the DPS and sustainability of minion builds. All right. Um, DPS wise, skeleton mages are not going to have the best time for league start now. And sustainability wise, if you are playing anything other than skeleton mages, you are not going to love it either. Like your carrion golem, um, race zombie, race petrus, if you are still playing it. Okay, so race petrus is still there. It, it did not affect. I, I don't know why, but yeah, it did not affect. Um, but you, you're not going to see your like carrion golem and zombie going to survive every single time from now onwards. Like sometimes some mods are already making them very squishy and now it's even worse. Okay. Second is they are going to change um, the helmets on or, or like the bone helmet to or any of the helmets like the plus one to three right on the helmets they are going to remove it so helmets can no longer roll plus one to three to level of socketed minion gems now they are going to replace it with plus one to two level of all minion skill gems now this to me is crazy all right first of all they did not say to all minions skill for the socketed uh, as in socketed minion gems all right so which means all right to me first of all this is like globally Anywhere you put your minion skills, it is going to affect plus one to two level. Right? This is literally a unnatural strength. Okay? So this is the good part to it. But then um the third part to this is being able to roll minion modifier on your rings and shield will also mean more damage. Okay? But the problem now is um if you want to roll on all these, you have to give up some of your mods like life and resist. And now currently almost all minion builds, we are just going to go the easy way. Like uh, we're going to roll life and resist on all our regulars. Um, basically that's max out our resist, max out our block and then max out our as much life as we can and just go. The rest of the minion damage comes from the skill tree. All right. So yes, I understand their problem. The, the problem was that we are too focused on the skill tree instead. Right? And we, we just take like clusters and passive nodes all on the skill tree and then the minion just becomes so goddamn powerful. Right? But I, I feel what they should do right was not was to not implement this kind of thing, but just to lower the standards of minion damage on the skill tree, like to balance it. This is like a completely change of how the way minion works. Okay. So yes, this is the first portion. This is the good part. Okay. So this is like a buff. They, they, they show the buffs first. All right. And then now comes the nerf. Okay. So the next one is here. Problem plus solution. Some minion skills are clearly outlier in terms of power, blah, blah, blah. So they reduce power of a coupling over performing minion skills. All right. Just long term short um, builds that are related to mine. Karen Golem right now has more life. Okay. And then skeleton, summon skeletons no longer have 50% more added damage. Uh, let me see. I, I, okay, let me just try. Uh, yep, here. So, summon Karen Golem is here. And then, uh, where is my summon skeleton? Wait, where is it? Um, did I miss it? Summon. Everything is summon. <laughs> okay, here, sorry. So, summon skeletons no longer has minions gain 50% more added damage. And now Skelly Mages uh, deal lesser damage. Alright, just, just lesser damage in short. Okay, this is the nerf. Absolution also deals uh, lesser damage, right? I, I think so. So Sentinel Absolution now deals approximately 25% less damage and 5% less damage at gem level 20. So this is still okay for leg start. Okay, this is still okay for leg start. Right, Um. so... I guess they are finally trying to nerf minions, but that is not all, okay? That is not all. I, I, in my own opinion, I think they nerf minion far too much this league. Okay, and next, minion nerf, another minion nerf. So here, problem. Because minions are monsters, they inherit some stats from monsters that can significantly affect build choices, blah, blah, blah. So 
um, long story short, they are going to nerf the changes of uh, how minions deal got damage. So here, minions no longer have hidden penalties to bleeding, blah, blah, blah. So summon reaper no longer has hidden bonus to bleeding damage. And in short, minions now deal twice as much poison damage. So uh, I don't know who we Arakali's fang. Three times as three and a half times as much ignite damage. Does any minion even deal ignite damage? I I don't recall though. Like by itself. Okay, by itself. I'm not talking about with support skills by itself. No, not that I can remember. I don't even remember rage summon raging spirit has ignite. Okay? And seven times as much bleeding damage. What? Seven times as much bleeding damage? Why is this so much? Are we gonna see we summon Reaper build meta next leg? And what's he gonna do? He's gonna slash and then the boss just uh, and die. <laughs> no, I don't know. Seven times is a lot. That's like 700%. What is this? 700%? Is this like a uh, give and take because the summon Reaper is so paper? It's gonna die so fast, but it's gonna deal insane damage. One time minion, I, I don't know, <laughs> but this is crazy. All right, the, okay. The, so the, this is the next one. Minions now gain the same bonus from endurance, frenzy, power charges as player do, rather than the significantly elevated bonus than other monsters gain. Um, first of all, I think this is a very reasonable buff, right? They 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 should they should not gain like super crazy amount of, um. Let's say like power charges, alright, power charges in minion, I think each power charges, they will get 100% increased crit strike chance, right? I think so, right? Uh, so now they have changed it back to 40%. Uh, the nerf explanation is rather reasonable, but I feel that it should not be nerfed so badly, okay? So, like that there is, there really isn't any real good way of the minions getting these charges, Okay, so if you want to nerf, maybe you should have nerfed it slightly lower. Like let's say maybe um power charges from 40 instead of 100, maybe you can give 70-80%. Like slightly lesser but not at the same level as player because they are not player. Right? Uh, stuff like that. Uh, instead of like just reducing it back to... I don't know, 40%. I mean, it is still good from your supporting spectrums, right? It's better than nothing, but that's too much of a nerf. Alright. Okay. And the next one is this. Um, Is it this? No, it's not this. Alright. Oh, it, uh, yeah, this one. So, problem. Investing in minion critical strikes has been possible in a very niche manner for some time now. Can you even invest in minion critical strikes? It's like always the bread and butter, the usual power charges and shits. Alright. So whatever. Okay, this is about critical strike chance and multiplier, alright? So solution is now they added more sources of minion critical strike investment. Which means minion have their own critical strike nodes or whatsoever now. Okay. So these are the changes. Spirit offering QM no longer grants elemental or chaos resistance to minions. Okay. Um, it instead now grants minions 110% increased critical strike chance at level 1. Level 1! Okay, level 1. And then it grants minions 30% um, crit strike multiplier at level 1. And then 39% at level 20? Just another 9 more percent? Okay, that's weird. Um, never mind, let's continue on first. So, Fism Force Passive Skill, the now now it no longer grants minion area of effect. Okay, so if you guys do not know where is that, right? Let me just show you a quick one, okay? Uh, if I remember, yep, it's here. It's on the top left. So this one is the one that grants area of effect. Now it doesn't grants area of effect. Basically, it grants critical strike chance and um, critical strike multiplier, okay? So good change, good change. Um, minions now have 100% increase uh critical strike chance right okay sorry so this is from the minion offensive offense mastery now it replaces with minions have 30 percent increased area of effect so which means they want you to take that um fearsome force passive skill instead of taking 
the minion offense mastery. So three more skill point instead of one. Okay. Uh, but yes, the the three more skill point does offer you a good amount of damage. We do not know the numbers yet, but yes, definitely more damage. Okay. Uh, new modifiers mentioned above, right? Like the family of minion critical strike chance mods. Uh, including multiplier as well. You can roll them on wands and shield now. That comes to my next question for this. Um, minions build, we heavily rely on like rare equipments for like life and resist, all right? Like, I think in general, okay, in general, any leak start and low budget build, you are supposed to have life and resist on your rare items. That's all, okay? That's all. You're not supposed to have any other thing. Like, unless it is really, really specific to your build that you need to have it, which you should not have because otherwise that will not be called a leak start or a low budget build. But then, then again, this is more towards the late game builds, all right? So yes, I, I think it is good for those uh, minion players, minion builds that like to play all the way until late, 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 late game, very high level late game. Your mirror tier, you can try and roll for a 6 or 5 perfect modifier item for your wand, uh, shield, like even the rings now have medium mods. Yes, it's going to be very fun for them, but it's not going to be very nice for leak start builds. Alright, it's not going to be nice for low budget builds as well, because we are going to have a lot of reduced damage, and we cannot give up the life and resist on our rare equipments. Okay? And the spirit offering. Guys, who even uses spirit offering? Like, I think even flesh offering is better. Right? If you don't have a lot of crit strike chance, then spirit offering is kind of useless. If you're not going to hit a good amount of critical strike, then spirit offering is useless because they don't have a base of crit either. Okay, that's what I'm trying to say. And... In general, you do not want your minions to die so much. That is why almost or mostly majority of the players are using Bone Offering. Okay, because Bone Offering not only protects your minion, it protects you as well. Okay, it allows your minion to survive and sustain on its own. Right, I'm pretty sure if you're going to play a Karen Golem build, Dude, you're not you're not gonna keep casting. Um, you're not gonna you're not gonna keep summoning your Karen Golem, your race zombie or your Spectra, right? So like every map you go, if you're gonna summon this, it's gonna waste a lot of time, especially in map bosses. What if the map boss is really really strong? All right, like just suddenly your whole entire group or party of minions die and then left you alone. Uh, you're not gonna run, keep running around like in circles and then press your minion one by one, summon. So you summon one Karen Golem, he aggro the boss, he dies again, what are you gonna do? You're gonna circle around and press again, is it? Doesn't make sense. So I think Bone Offering is still the go to for most minion builds, right? Unless probably like you're in the. Then again, if you're in a very late game, if you somehow manage to scale your minions until very very strong, they are very tanky, then yes, maybe spirit offering or flesh offering would be the better choice. Okay. So now this is finished. Now comes to this part which I feel is the most absurd. Okay. Necromancer's unnatural strength notable passive is extremely strong for almost all minions build, obviously because it's plus two level. Like minions scale a lot with level. Okay, so this skill makes it hard to justify using other ascendancy classes for minion builds. What the hell is this sentence? This skill makes it hard to justify using other ascendancy classes for minion builds. Dude, we are necromancers. Necromancers are for minion builds. If it's not for minion builds, why do you even call it a necromancer? <laughs> you, you get what I mean, right? So, it's like weird. Are you asking me to play a minion build with this? Oh, I don't know, with a Raider, a Assassin, whichever you like it, you want uh, Ascendant? Yeah, that's, a, that's the title or the word Necromancer there for a reason, like all the other games have. When you're playing a Necromancer, straight away you know it's a minion. It's a minion class, it's a minion build. Like, okay, you can skill with other stuff, but minion builds won't go wrong with Necromancer, right? If, if it goes wrong there, I think the game has a problem. Right, so, okay, never mind, that side... Change unnatural strength to provide a less universal applicable state. Why would we even do that? 
and allow more access to minion gem levels on items instead. So now, Necromancer's Unnatural Strength no longer provides plus 2 to all minion skill gems, but instead it grants minions Unholy Might. What the hell? Okay, so for those of you that does not know, Unholy Might converts... I uh, know it deals additional chaos damage based on a portion of your physical damage. So I, I think it's 20 or 30%. I, I can't remember. I, I know it's on one of the passive skills here also. Oh no, it doesn't. Oh no, it doesn't. I'm sorry. Unholy Might? Is that Unholy Might? Uh, it doesn't show. Okay, it doesn't state. But I, I know it basically deals additional chaos damage based off uh, maybe 20 or 30% of physical damage. What the hell? <laughs> what the heck? Which means this only benefits physical damage minion builds. Right? And there's only a few to name. Raise Zombie, maybe a physical summon Ray Spectra, uh, Carrion Golem, and the rest are all elemental and chaos damage. So this, this thing is very subjective, okay? This change is so subjective that I feel is not fair. So how about the other minion um, minion builds, like elemental damage or chaos damage? It's not fair, all right? Like, I with these changes, right, I, I don't even know what's good to take next. So let's say you see over here, we have four, right? So Command of Darkness, uh, Mindless Aggression, Mistress of Sacrifice, I think it's a must now already. What are you going to take next? Bone Barrier? Yeah, Bone Barrier can be an option. Go more tanky. Uh, Plague Bringer. So when you have corpse, more damage. More AoE. Not like it really helps. The more AoE. Or Essence Glutton. Um, that's provided if you are farming. If you are going the ES build. Alright. I, I, I really don't know what else to take anymore. I think the only good option is like Bone Barrier or Plague Bringer. Then there's really no good better ascendancy. Alright. Okay, so that's that's for like the minion, the disappointing minion side, alright? Now, um, the next thing I want to take is this. Uh, let's say the corpse, where is it? Is the corpse, yep, this one. Okay. So, problem. Uh, skills that cause corpse explosion derive much of the damage scaling from increased maximum corpse life. Okay, so... Long story short, uh, solution, they remove the increased maximum cost life strat from, uh, stat from the Necromancer Ascendancy and reduce the values available elsewhere. Okay, increase the percentage of corpse life dealt as damage for all corpse explosion skills uh, to offset this substantial damage loss and have this percentage scale with level of the skill. So, in short, right? They decrease the maximum life of corpse and some of them even remove the maximum life for some of the corpse skill. And overall, I can just say this is like a reduce in damage of corpse skill, which means like your detonate dead, uh, cremation, volatile dead, they all have been nerfed. Okay, this is just long story short. So for those of you that are playing hardcore uh, solo self found or whatever, it's a bad news for you. <laughs> Okay, and next, so next thing I want to talk about is, alright, Explosive Harrow. So this thing has been a pretty good leak start since the start of like two leaks ago. Uh, I, I'm not really a fan of this Explosive Arrow. To me, it's a bit slow, but still good. Alright, so um, Explosive Problem is Explosive Arrow currently has a single stat for hit and ailment damage per arrow stuck on the target, okay? So, which means they are trying to say it's too powerful. The stacking is too powerful. And what they did was uh, explosion deals 5% more damage with hits and ailments per explosive arrow on target, right? This is previously. Now it deals 6% more damage with hits for uh, per explosive arrow on target. So this is only for hits and it deals 3% more damage with ailments. So they separate out the hits and the ailments. Right, 6% and 3%. So now it doesn't scales like in general, but it scales too differently. Okay, so I, I'm not sure if this is a good thing or not, because I only played Explosive Arrow once and I didn't really like it, so I stopped. Right, so I don't know, we might see Explosive Arrow again next league since there's so many nerfs this league. 
<laughs> okay, next is your awesome cast when damage taken. Okay, our ascendant cast when damage taken is getting a huge nerf. So, um, problem when spell based damage values will dramatically increase in 3.17. Um, Alright, just in short, they increase the damage penalty of cast when damage taken support, reduce the damage bonus of cast on death support to match the changes made to other trigger mechanisms in 3.17. Okay, so just in short, right? Cast when damage taken, the build got nerfed. Right, I, I don't even know if anybody else is gonna play it, but the 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 drop in damage is quite a lot. Okay, so at maximum level, right, you're gonna have twenty seven percent less damage rather than six percent more damage previously. So previously it was a positive number, now it's a negative number. And yes, some people do actually play cast on death, like they go into the boss and then they are like some sweet sider, okay? They just go in and die and the boss instantly dies, like just get one shot based on cast on death because the, 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 the multiplier on the damage for cast on death is too much, 304%, okay? So you just six sling it and just go in and boom, the boss just die and then you just walk in back into the portal, Collect your stuff, get out. One death, one boss. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> okay, so they, they 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 decided to nerf this. Okay, and next is the blessing skills. Alright, so in short, I think the big hit on this is blessing skills can no longer be supported by lifetime. I think lots of people is using this previously. Uh, because you get another aura with just sacrificing your life and you can just life steal it back. Right, you can just uh, regen it back or whatsoever and this is really good. So they decided to remove this. Okay, and next is another one that actually affects us. So it's this, okay. Uh, problem. Sniper's marks provide a large amount of power to projectile builds, but also provides powerful flash charge generation. Okay, so generating life charges, life flash charges in particular provides a lot of hidden power for builds utilizing sniper's mark. Uh, blah blah their solution was to remove the life and mana flash charge generation from sniper's mark okay so this actually affects um more towards the leak start and the low budget builds all right because we do use life flashes uh we do use life uh life flash right so when you are leak starting and you are using a projectile, Sniper Smart is going to give you so much sustainability when you are fighting like egg bosses, alright? Because somehow or other, you always run out of life and mana charges, right? And then, what do you do? I, I mean, are you just going to run around and hope the boss spawns some monsters and then kill them? And then wait for your charges to come up again. And that's why Sniper's Mark is really strong. Because it constantly gives you that charge. So that you can sustain the boss fight. So I think this is uh, their concern. It's, very, very, it's fairly strong in X. Uh, but I shouldn't be bothered so much about it. Still fine. Okay. And the next I want to talk about is Hydrosphere. Okay. So uh, they did some changes to Hydrosphere. I'm just saying it because I am afraid. Some of you might not understand it, alright? So, the changes was they allow Hydrosphere to be hit by the entity that casts it. So previously, if you have other players or even apparently what they have mentioned is minions, uh, your minions and other players can hit your Hydrosphere to proc it, okay? So they can proc like the sap or something like that, right? So now, whoever that casts the Hydrosphere are the only ones that are able to hit it. So which means if I cast Hydrosphere in front, I'm the only one that is able to hit it. If I have minions, my minions will not be able to hit it as well. If I have other players in my party, other players are not able to hit it as well. So you and only you that cast Hydrosphere can hit it. Okay. All right. And next is this. Um, this is something that is not under mine. Uh, Juggernaut. Okay. So over here. Juggernaut's unbreakable skill is overly complicated. Um, players unable to focus on stats they want from skills, blah, blah, blah. Basically, they split into two more 
two more powerful skills. So the first one is what I want to talk about. Okay, Juggernaut's unbreakable notable ascendancy passive skills no longer grants regenerate 2% of life per second, 5% reduce damage taken, blah blah blah. Now it grants 8% of armor applies to elemental damage from hits. I don't know. Am I the only one that thinks this is actually quite crazy? If you are playing an armor stacking build, okay, let's say if you have 100k armor, okay, even 100k armor is not a lot for armor stacking build. Let's say if you have 100k armor, 8% of this armor applies to elemental damage you take from hits. So which means you are going to sort of mitigate 8,000 elemental damage prevented. 8,000. 8,000 is a lot. Like, 8,000 is including after the resistance that you have minus off. So let's say if you are going to get Okay, if you're going to take about 20,000, um, let's just say 20,000 elemental damage, okay? 20,000 fire damage, okay? You are going to reduce this by 75% first because of your resist cap. So 75% um, double, let's say you're just going to take 5,000 uh, fire damage, okay? 8% of this is 8,000. You are going to completely mitigate this this um this elemental damage this is really crazy right this is only when i'm talking at when you have 100k armor what if you have like 500k armor right i think most armor stacking builds they have tons of armor okay like if you were to see my um my ci scaling mage build i actually do have 100k armor that is really a lot like that is really really a lot I'm not sure what happens if you have way more armor than that, like I mentioned 500k. How much elemental damage are you going to mighty gain? Like, thousands is already a lot. This is even more. Okay, the other ascendancy skills, I, I can't be bothered. So yeah, let's leave it to that. Um, Next is, I want to talk about this. Okay, unique item balance. So, Crystallized Omniscience and Ashore of Star are powerful unique amulets that have both adopted a wide variety of builds, blah blah blah. In short, they are saying it's too strong. Okay? So solution, they lower the amount of elemental penetration and resistance granted by Crystallized Omniscience. I don't know why, but they talk about Omniscience and Ashore of the Star, but they only nerf Omniscience. Maybe Ashore of the Star will come in later. Okay, I'm not sure. But now, um, it grants 1% to all ally resist and 1% uh, elemental penetration. Per 15 Omniscience, right? Previously it was 10, so <clears throat> I would say that's like a, that's like a 33 percent nerf right there. So yeah, they nerf they nerf crystallized Omniscience. So now there is a nerf. Can you guys sell it cheaper so that I can use it and play it? <laughs> Previously I feel it was too expensive and it's not worth investing into it. All right, and now next one also a very uh generic balance which almost everybody felt it should have is smelling of the flesh so it increases um th there's too much benefits to this so now they added a penalty whereby your maximum element maximum elemental resistance is reduced also okay so you are not able to reach 90 percent now okay um okay maybe you are you are still able to reach but you will need to enforce maybe more passive or more mods to reach 90%. So that's why now Melding of the Flash has minus 4 to 6% to all maximum all maximum elemental resistance. And what I can say is this is actually quite a nerf to aura bots, aura stackers, whichever. You need to find some space or slots to invest this um, 4 to 6% additional maximum elemental resistance okay so this is another huge one and the next one oh my god this is the real disappointment in all of this manifesto okay this this problem the introduction of reservation efficiency has encouraged a much larger range of builds to invest uh, in reservation skills of course because this is the only thing left right and then uh, reservation mastery options are the biggest outliers in power, alright, just in general. So their solution was to remove the mana reservation efficiency mastery and reduce the power of 
some of the mastery passive as well so what they did was they removed the 15 percent increased mana reservation efficiency of skills what the hell why <laughs> why i i mean this is like okay first of all right it is already so hard to have four useful auras right not to mention even three some of us might have even difficulty like having three because we have to scale like left right bottom just to get the fourth one if we really need um if we don't take any of the mana reservation uh, um, skill notes right we can only have three okay so it's like 150 percent maybe 125 percent and either one clarity vitality possession whichever you want or one banner okay this is like the go-to for almost every single build right you gotta agree with me okay so if you manage to take this mana reservation efficiency notes there uh preferably two sides like i think whichever one you take you can take either the charisma or okay let me just show you okay so there's there's the four generic ones one is here influence and the other one is here sovereignty the other one is here uh, leadership and our most popular one is charisma right so if you can take any of these two right i, I think you can have the fourth um aura quite easily like when i talk about fourth aura we're talking about the big ones right those 50 percent ones like determination um hatred wrath pride uh grace maybe i don't know if anybody even uses that but now right now with this 15 percent being removed we are going to have problem okay i am pretty sure you it is not enough to just take two you will need to go to the third mana reservation efficiency notes just to reserve one more aura at this point of time right it is not worth it anymore because they are so spread out they are everywhere it's very far all right it's not worth it okay so it's like the it's like the numbers are actually perfectly fine to have four auras three auras like um on the way when you take other notes right you can just take those and then uh the fourth aura is usually uh determination i think yeah right for most of us it is like the bread and butter for almost like 99 percent of the builds i would say 99 percent because probably only one percent of the builds like play mana like full mana we're talking about the mind over metal cloak of defiance that kind of build the indigon builds all right builds that utilize mana that's why i say 99 percent of almost all builds are using it so why why would you remove it like why would you completely remove it it is not something that is overpowered it is not something that it is too strong and it enables like a next tier of damage for the builds it is just more utility for builds to survive and have slightly increased in damage why would you completely remove it? It's totally uncalled for. <laughs> Alright. And the next one is the reservation mastery here. That grants life reservation efficiency of skills. Now has a value of 20%. Previously 30%. With this change, right? I don't even know if I use Prism Guardian. I can equip 3 50% um, auras. Okay. I really do not know. I will need to test it myself and I'll update it but holy crap man what the hell this this i i really felt that this this single line right is really really uncalled for it was really really not necessary you could have reduced it or you could have nerf or increase the threshold or something like that but this is like what you have already nerfed the auras once and now you're gonna nerf it again <laughs> okay whatever and then this one is um reservation mastery that causes all us from a skill that increase if you now have a value of 10 percent so previously it was 15 percent i've always mentioned this in almost a lot of my builds that i say this is really really strong okay you should not you should never underestimate this 15 percent because this 15 percent does not only give you damage it gives you survivability it gives you effective hp more armor or more evasion whichever you want it increases every single one of them that's why it's very good you cannot just see this small amount of 15 percent and just say uh maybe if it increases 5k damage hey it's bad no okay it increases every single aspect of your build okay 
Ah, so much disappointment. So, next is this. It's just right below. Problem. Um, line of flash modifier that grants flash charges when you're hit by enemy. So, there is this mod that actually gives you flash charges when you are hit by one of the monsters. Alright. So, previously it was quite a lot. It was 4, 6, and 7 the, for the higher tier ones. And now it is 1, 2, and 3. Okay, it is not so good anymore for those people that is hoping that you can infinitely sustain in boss fights or whatever this is not viable anymore yeah so previously i was using this as well for me it's not so impactful because i don't really rely on this as well um it is really good okay almost everyone is using this but at this point i say you probably have to choose something else unless this is still the next best thing in line all right and the last one i want to talk about is this <sighs> this is also another ridiculous change. Not not change, but uh, improvement or so they call. So damage taken recoup as life is a relatively new recovery option. And there are not currently enough sources of it available for players who wish to invest heavily in it. First of all, why will we invest in recoup taken as life when the mechanics of this is whatever damage you taken, it will heal over 4 seconds. Okay. My first question is, um, why would you even use this? So you have many options to recover back your life. One is by life steal, all right. You can either life steal life or life steal ES, right? And when you have life steal, right, you recover way faster than this uh, damage taken recoup as life. Okay. Second. When you are going for a regen build, you have tons of regen. You have insane amount of regens like Consecrated Ground for... Um, holy crap, what was that class? I suddenly can't remember. Uh, um, it's the Templar class. Oh, shit. What was that class? Uh, yeah, this one, okay. Right. With the Consecrated Ground. Oh my god, suddenly I just can't remember. When you have this, right, your regeneration is going to be way top of the line and you're probably going to regenerate much faster than this damage taken recoup as life. Okay, so what is the purpose of this? I really do not know. Four seconds, I feel it's too long. And now they implement Crimson Viridian Cobalt Jewels that enroll 4 to 6% of it. Okay, so what's the point even if you have 100%? Let's just say if you have 100%, okay? You are going to have so many items, so many nodes that has um, this damage taken recoup as life. I'm pretty sure you need at least like, okay, how many nodes? How many nodes are there on a tree? Let's just find, okay. Damage recoup as, how do you even spell it? Okay, there we go. Okay, so we have 1866. 1866 is 30. Um, what's this? 4, 4, and 12. 20. So that's 50% here already. Okay. 50%. Wait, is that all? Really? Okay, so that is all. 50%. You have 50%. Now you can re uh, now you can roll 4 to 6% of it. So let's just say, okay, you have another... 10 is also not viable. 10 of these jewels, base jewels with this is not, it's not feasible either. Why 10? Because 10 of this, let's say you have 5% of damage recoup as life on each of these jewels, you need 10 to cover for the 50%, right? So 50 plus 50, you'll get 100. Okay? Imagine you, the amount of, oh, wait, 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 sorry, there is, uh, okay, the mastery does not provide either. All right, so this, right, <laughs> this thing you will need like um six notes and like another six maybe ten okay let's just say if you want 80 percent okay 80 percent i give you seven or eight jewel sockets you need to invest so much into this just to recover whatever damage you have taken all right and this can be done with just one single note which is lifesteal you just need to add one life steal when your damage is high enough, you just heal everything you take. Right? So in short, what I'm trying to say is this damage taken recoup as life is really really a bad recovery option. They should try and see it again. 
right? Okay, if it's if it's over two second, right, I might really consider it. But now it's over four second. What makes you think you can kill the monster fast enough and let you recover within four seconds? I mean, the monster that is hitting you is going to hit you probably quite heavily, right? Or even if it's small group, it's going to hit you multiple times and you're not going to heal fast enough over four seconds before you actually die. Right, so this is a very weird inclusion. Like if you want, you could have just included 100% in the tree and you know, maybe try some mean builds or something. Some some builds that just let you recover life over and over and over again. Okay. Alright, so yes, that's it for the manifesto. This is what I think of it, alright? So first of all is there are a lot of changes in the manifesto that does not make sense to me, alright? Second is Defiance Banner got nerfed, so which means we're not going to see a lot of 90% cap physical damage reduction anymore. Third is the nerf of minion builds, alright? We do not know the numbers yet, but I am very sure it is an uh, ultimate nerf on minion builds, for sure. At league start, at low budget, for sure. But at late game, probably it is a buff to minion builds, alright? So they are trying to scale minions with items now which is going to be very hard for players because uh, for casual players like me or any of my viewers that have been playing with me so far, right? we all know that minions is really, really easy. It's very straightforward. You just need to scale damage on your tree and then scale life and defenses on your items and just pop your minions and go and have fun. Right Now you are making things so much more complicated you are reducing damage from crit and crit multiplier. You are reducing damage and life to sustain our minions per level. And you are trying to make us itemize our builds uh, with, them, with minion damage from our items when we are already struggling to try and find the perfect items to cover all our resistance and life, so on and so forth. Right. So, what is the purpose of this minion nerfs? I, I think it is way too much, alright. If they nerf it, I feel they have like, they should just continue nerfing the percentage or the base damage of minions instead of one shot just killing every single aspect of how minion builds originally work. Okay, that's what I think. And then next is CWDT build probably. Okay, it's not dead, but there is a big, nerf in damage right and then we have uh rip to detonate dead cremation and volatile dead as well i think so okay i i did not really play the build so i do not know i might be wrong right and the rest is just oh yes there is that mana reservation oh my god don't let me think of it again please that thing is a real huge disappointment man <laughs> Okay, I'm very upset, okay, because I've been trying to improve all the leak start and low budget builds and I have done almost, I would say, 80% of it and now because of this, it is a problem because I have to go into every one of my builds and try to balance it again. This 15% is a big problem because you always try to, you know, keep a nice amount of mana so that you can use for all your skills and now without this 15%, I have to rebuild the, the auras and stuff again. I have to manage and juggle all of this and it is a real big problem. Okay. So yes, what do you think about this changes? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Right, do remember to join our Discord to debate, discuss, whatever. We have some discussions going on in my Discord. Uh, whether you like the changes or you don't like the changes, do join us. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Okay, that comes to the end of this video. So um, if you have any questions, do join the Discord and I will try to answer your questions. And if you like my video, do remember to hit the like and subscribe button. I will see you in the next one. Bye.